Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward. We are broadcasting from Ventura, California, and um, we have half the crew about here today. It's just me. 50, got, 50% yeah, of 50% crew. 50% of the crew. Dan yep. is at the controls, as always, and we got Gabe here as well. You. Yep. And we've actually, it's been in a, kind of an odd couple of weeks because we actually haven't been in studio. We've mm. been rebuilding the studio. Yeah, we've been yeah. here, but we just yeah, haven't been just on haven't camera. Taping shows or anything, but... So, Dan, let, fill everybody in on, because you're the technical guru around here. So what, tell us what we've been doing, to, new cameras and... We have new, we have six new cameras. They're the uh, little black magic. They're, you guys can't see them on, on screen, but they're really, really small, like a little bit bigger than GoPros. But they're 4K. They're really nice, high-end cameras. I can control them all from here. We've got a new switcher. We were switching on a computer. Now we're switching on an ATEM switcher, a black magic switcher. Nice. So uh yeah, we're we're looking good. It's like we have everything we need to uh make everything happen. From here it looks like you're about to play the piano. I am. It has a nice look <laughs> to it. It's sort of like, yeah. you know, flickering light piano thing here exactly. <laughs> well it's a nice setup. I mean I love it. And it sounds good. Yes, everything and, is now Gabe's in charge. He's he's like He's the, this, we call him the czar. He's what, whatever kind of scary names we can give him. But do you approve of all this? Oh, absolutely. I absolutely approve of all this. I think it looks this. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it looks good. Sounds good. Um, it's making our lives um, a little bit easier, you know? Uh, we're still not making any money with the show, so please, if you want to send us money, uh, <laughs> we, do that. They'll pay for some of this. Yeah. Um, but it just because we all have day jobs and we all need to, you know, work but do work our schedules around this show, or vice versa. But you know, it's allowing us to have a little bit more of a, I don't know, peaceful life. I think. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. you know, the real test isn't what we think about it. It's going to be curious to kind of what kind of response we get from you. Yeah. The listeners, the viewers, to find out if they like the look and the sound of this. But Dan, I think you've done a great job. It, this thing looks great. It sounds great. And you're like so particular about the angles and yes, yes, and whether well, you got it's perfectly focused. And that's that. what. Well, yeah, soft yeah. picture. People don't like watching that. No, so no. it's interesting though. Gabe was telling me before we started taping this though that we're getting real engagement on listeners on podcast listeners more so than people watching. The, the YouTube show. So, so we spent all this money on cameras for an audio podcast. <laughs> so it could be out of focus, right? I mean, if it's out of focus, yeah. who's going to know, right? Yeah, you could be half naked if you wanted to, <laughs> but not. Wow. No, yeah. yeah. Wow, you already went yeah. there. We're like yeah. two minutes in. I was yeah, about I know. to say. Already got to nudity. Oh, wow. my gosh. But that sounds like a segue to me because one of the things we were going to talk <laughs> about was the. So we taped a show with all this new gear. Yes. And. There were some on the team who believed that what our discussion was just inappropriate. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, so we're not airing it at this point until we can clear the air a little bit. Yeah. It was yeah. it was a controversial show. Uh, even even amongst our internal crew, it was controversial. Yeah. It was like, ooh, wow. It, and it was your fault. I oh, it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I personally think we should air it, but you know, hey, you know, we can. Put it in the vault. You know, I think it came down to, it boiled down to one tiny little thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You made me, oh, maybe boy. if you air the show, you'll know exactly what we're talking wow. about. But <laughs> I thought that was a good way to put it. If I anybody's mean, listening to this or watching this, please comment. Do you want to see what this little thing <laughs> was about that is causing controversy at the and, show? And, and we should give some context to this because we, we, we should have some context. Sure, so the, sure. Part of, this, part of that show that has not aired and may never air was just a part of it was a tiny part of it was about <laughs> haters yeah. and why do people hate yes yeah. yes and yeah. we had one one of our ideas about why certain guys we think most of them are guys yeah is because of i have to be careful was i i'm going to air this show <laughs> yeah but i think part of it had to do with part of their anatomy not measuring up. Wow, you just kind of basically okay. explaining what, what the problem okay, was. But I didn't say the word, and I think it's the word that made some people uncomfortable, right? Okay. Uh, okay. It so. wasn't a dirty word. No. It's, no. A, it's a medical term. True, true. What was that? Oh, that's a Harley. That was someone's Harley. That was yeah. definitely a Harley I think going they, by. they went past because they want to be in West of Tulsa. <laughs> or they're getting away from us. Yeah, maybe maybe they know what the show was about. Yeah. Okay, so that's enough about the show that never aired that may air at some point. Unless you guys want to elaborate unless, a bit more on it. Unless some of the other people's, <coughs> Beth, uh, has a change of heart. <laughs> so we'll see. 
We'll see. Oh my god. Helm seems to be on Beth's side. Hey, he's always on her side, so yeah. yeah. I think they're in cahoots. Yeah. We'll have to so. take another vote. <laughs> Without them, <laughs> yeah. Without them around, we'll take another vote. Yeah, oh. but you know what though? Um, that does bring up a good another segue to um, engagement with um, our viewers and followers and stuff. Um, you know, people have been commenting on a lot of stuff that we've been posting, um, and a lot of people have been, you know, I don't want to say arguments, but they've been stating their case um, on these posts, and it's really interesting to see the, I don't know, if you call it dynamics of people in general just talking about a certain subject or whatever car related well the one that we, i think has had the most recently is one with dana newquist who was on yeah and he was talking about how difficult because dana has restored so many cars yeah but his topic was that there's a real problem if you're restoring finding body guys who do body work yeah. metal work um working on gauges chrome plating all that kind of stuff and that sparked this great conversation back and forth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's a. I mean, from every angle, one one for the customer, one for the body shop guy, one for the industry. I mean, people had, and you know what? I I can't argue with any of these people. They all have no. valid points. Yeah. It's just it's just interesting to see that kind of like, you know, feedback all in one area, just off one video that we thought just was just like a little tidbit of. Well, you know. this was on Instagram, right? Yeah, I think yeah. you were telling me. So, reel, yeah. so explain the context because I haven't seen it. You told me this had like super high engagement, like 10,000, 15,000 comments or views or something. Views, yeah, yeah. The comments, I think, were in the hundreds or whatever. But um, a lot of people were going back and forth. Of course, people get into these arguments, these heated arguments that they're right and the other person's wrong and this and that. And it's all speculation, I think. But, um, you know, there's a lot of people are speaking from their own. There are people that like literally own body shops or. Um, their son works at a body shop or a guy who's restored cars himself or, you know, and, and or people like I got screwed over by an, uh, a company or, or a shop. And, and I don't think it was a question whether Dana was right or wrong. I think everybody was, for the most part, agreeing that Dana's comment was correct, that finding people who do this anymore is very difficult. I think what the debate was is the reasons, f the reasons for it and why, why that has happened, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. why things have changed over yeah. the last 20, 30, 40 years. And I don't think anybody's actually wrong because no. it sounds to me that everybody's speaking from their own experience. And that goes back to their own stories. Right. I'm sure somebody's got a story about dealing with a body shop or whatever, or restoring their own car or doing the work themselves. I know plenty of people have learned to paint and do body work themselves because they don't, can't take it to a shop or they sure. don't want to, you know, so... I think it's all valid. It's totally. just, you know, and that people are stating their case and there's, I think that's good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, but that's the whole point of what we're here for. We want to yeah. bring up these topics that sometimes are uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and, and talk about it. Yeah. Well, right. Gabe, weren't, weren't you mentioning Gabe also that the engagement came from some posts that were in commenting on the thread and then it kind of took on a life of its own. Yeah. Is that sort of what yeah. happened? Yeah. One guy says a comment and, or girl and uh, someone says, no, 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 that's not it. And then somebody says, no, no, no. You, you know, they're going back and forth. And then next thing, you know, I think there's one, like one particular guy, uh, you said something. And then like a bunch of people ganged up on against that no, guy. No. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, oh, no. whatever. You know, but, but hey, like I said, I don't think anyone's right or wrong in the situation. They're just exp explaining from their own point of view. And I think that's okay. You know, I think it's healthy. To explain, everybody's gonna have a difference of opinion. On well, that's what social media is for. I yeah, mean, you know. Yeah, it's not for bullying. <laughs> Cy cyber bullying. <laughs> yeah, cyber bullying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Please don't bully us. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, though, everybody's been great. Yeah, the uh, support's been great. You know, we've been getting followers. Uh, Helm just went to the uh, Haggerty meet for the uh, Benz, uh, Benz and something meet um, down at Van Nuys, and uh, uh, he got a lot of love out, out there. So um, people will recognize him. He, they recognized his face from yeah. West of Tulsa. I know. And he was well, getting yeah. yelled at and stuff like, come on over here. Right yeah, now. yeah. They were, they were like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, he's the guy from West of Tulsa or whatever, you know. Um, but he, he he even said like a lot of people, um, you know, like boots on the ground. He was like getting fee direct feedback from people saying that how much they love the content, and which was really encouraging because we, we want to hear from people saying, hey, does this stuff – matter to you guys do you guys care about this kind of stuff yeah you know um I was think, the blooper real real 
Was it a real blooper reel? <laughs> I think they. I, mean, I that, think they realized it. Too. Helm's that not was that good of an deal. actor. That yeah. I mean, that was a pretty legit him screwing up. I, you know, I'm going to throw it out there again. I know I, I I pushed it for weeks, but if you haven't seen Helm's outtakes, you have to go see it. It's on West. It's also yeah yeah. yeah. It's just called Helm's outtakes. And yep. it's hilarious. So Beth and I, when we get depressed, it's like, oh, let's watch Helm's out too. <laughs> Cheers us up every time. Well, one thing we did talk about on the last show that apparently we can't air, Beth. Um, <laughs> we did talk about Helm. And we talked about the state of Helm, right? And how uh, he's done really, really well. He was so nervous to be on camera and talking and he was very nervous the first time we recorded i'll give him that but now he's just like yeah, yeah thinks he's gonna have, be on johnny carson well not that johnny carson but he you could know, take man. over tonight show pretty soon yeah yeah, yeah yeah johnny carson's dead that was my uh, whatever dan <laughs> <laughs> he's been you dead know, and he's been dead a long time you know it's funny dan that anybody under i don't know 40 or 50 doesn't even know who they're going who's, like, who's who, the, who the hell's johnny carson, Google yeah, johnny right. carson. <laughs> probably you're probably right yeah who, who does Tonight Show now? Uh, I don't watch Jimmy, uh, Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Fallon okay, does, good. yeah. Oh, boy. I was starting to sound really old there for a second if I would come up with it. Which uh, young whippersnapper now, does the Tonight yeah. Show now, CJ? Oh, welcome to the Tonight Show. Oh, so, boy. So, can, okay, Tonight Show trivia. Do you know who's, who was doing Tonight Show before Johnny Carson? Yeah. Before uh, Johnny Carson? Sadly, I, Johnny sadly Carson? I think I know, but I won't say. There was, I thought he was the man. No, no. There was, there was somebody before Johnny Carson. And Johnny Carson did it for, what, 30 years, something yeah. like that? So this would take you back to the early 60s or late 50s when he took over. So any idea? Jack Parr. Right on the money. Jack Parr. Because I'm old. The I two know old these guys things. figured that I, I know yeah. these things. Although yeah. I never watched it, I can say. I, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. yeah. Do you, see, know, what, do you what, know? See what happens when you hang out with old farts like us? You hey, know, you learn a thing or two. TV trivia. What, what year did Jack Parr kick off or let it, you know, Pass the mantle to Johnny. Do you remember? You know, I, that's what I was saying. I think it was probably early '60s, maybe mid '60s. Because that's when I'm born, so yeah, I, that, I wouldn't I th- know. No, I wouldn't know either. I, but I think it was somewhere like that, '63 ish. We'll have to Google that one. But <laughs> okay. Gabe's like, "What the hell? What happened All to this right. show? All right, what happened to this show? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? What are you old dudes it? talking about? I learned. I learned something new. I'm good. Mm, okay, that's cool. Good. All right. Okay, let's get back on track and yeah. talk about cars. Yeah. So, what did Johnny drive? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was thinking about Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson actually had, I think, a decent car collection. I remember he had uh, Jay Leno and Tim Allen on his show. Yes. And they did a burnout competition. Yes, I do remember that. And I I, I think it was um, Tim Allen that smoked them. Or, so yeah. whoever won, I think it was Tim Allen, that just like laid the fattest burnout. And then Jay Leno was just like, eh. He's a total you know, car guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So that's, that was a long time ago. All right. What other comments? Any other comments about Instagram, what people are talking about? I mean, this is kind of a state of the show, I guess, discussion. Yeah, Gabe should tell us because he's our yeah. he's our social media guru. Yeah. So well, well, easy, all that stuff. easy with the guru. Part. But they're loving Helm. Yeah, they love Helm. Uh, Everybody has Helm. They love Beth. They yeah. hate you. They hate me. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Dan yes. is like a... Well, they don't I'm know who the you tour. are, I'm and, on the fence. and they're calling out Dan for not being a uh, non-car a car guy. guy. <laughs> so they're like, he's a secret car guy. Try, stop stop but, faking it. Yeah, he knows more than us, but he's a non-car guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a truck guy. That's all. I'm a truck guy. No, actually... Um, I ran into Christina Jimenez. Um, oh, we had Car- on the show a little while ago. Yes, yeah. and um, <laughs> she said that um, a lot of people have hit her up from the show, um, watching the show that when she was on the show um, about when she talked about the speed dating for car people. Uh, oh, yeah. part of the show yeah and she said like seven or eight people hit her up was like you should really do this so i think she's really going to consider it and i'm totally going to take helm to it because the guy consider what were they going to do a, a show about it or no 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 no, no. A, a speed dating for car people so she you know whatever event she might put together i could totally see christina doing that she's the right person she's super social she knows women and men yeah. in the car in the car circles i it'd be perfect for her oh yeah she could be the she could be the patty stanger of the car world right (laughs) the what patty stanger she's got that new show it's like a matchmaking show it's on i don't know i've been seeing promos for it all over social media don't know now but now that you said that my phone's picking it up and probably is going to show up my feed now so thanks dan (laughs) sorry about that (laughs) 
You know who I'm talking about, CJ, right? No, I have no idea. Oh, it's like, it's a matchmaker show. It was like, it's really, it's on Bravo or something, but she's, you know, it's like a Real Housewives audience, but maybe she came from Real Housewives. I don't know. But she's like a, she's a matchmaker woman, <laughs> like legit and has her own show. It's pretty crazy. But yeah. I can see Christina totally becoming that of the car world. And she'd probably make a lot of money too. So if she starts it, we have her, have her back on and... Have her promote it, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I told her I was like, that's what she should do. She's like, if she's going to really do this, I was like, come back on the show. Well, let's talk about it. Because I think a lot of people will be interested. Because I know plenty oh, yeah. of car people who are, yeah. well, I pretty much only know car people. But um, that would probably get on board with that, you know. I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah and it it's would really add, smart. It would add a whole new meaning to the, to the name Lane Drifter. What? Uh, yeah, it would give you a whole new meaning. Is this another Lane thing where Drifter. Beth's going to... No, have a problem. no, no, no. Is there something inappropriate no, coming? No, I, I'm not, no. Look, after my last experience, I'm not going to touch that with a ten foot pole because <laughs> what, I want this show to air. But slang, what is slang? A lane drifter? What does that mean? I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> Sorry, Christina. <laughs> so, I'm not going to elaborate anymore. But I think it's a great idea. I hope she does it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I th- I think it'd be fun. I, I think, think so. it'd be fun. I think maybe so. we'll maybe we'll we'll go shoot that <laughs> interview people. That are oh, I think that'd be great. I think that'd How be great. How awesome would it be? Is like, uh, uh, you know, I met my wife at this speed dating for car people, that'd and be she cool. was driving this, and I was driving that, and you know, yeah. I think that's a great yeah. idea. Now, would you do it? You'd show up in your cars, right? Whatever you're driving. I would hope so. It'd be something I mean, you I took a bus to that. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if if a woman's gonna date a guy, she needs to know what kind of car he drives, right? Well, here's the thing: when you say speed dating, there has been speed dating before, but they always did it at like a restaurant or something where you would sit at a table and mm-hmm. and then you'd sit at the table for five minutes and talk to the person. Then they you'd rotate to a different table. You've seen these on yeah, comedy yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, that's when you think of speed dating. Yeah. But now you could add a whole new dimension to well, they could do speed like, dating. They could do you know? drag racing yeah. to see who's going to pay for the first date. Or yeah. I mean, the possibilities I are endless, that. right? You could, you could get <laughs> crazy stuff. What do you think? What do you think, Gabe? <laughs> I think that's a bit over the top, but all right. Well, I mean, That's what's like, going to happen now that you've said that. But. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I mean, I was thinking more of like a cars and coffee type of like <laughs> hanging out. I mean, just oh, like, that's, uh, so your car, but you guys went way for the yeah, yeah, we, we went for the. You're yeah. talking about like literal speed dating. Pedal, pedal, like the we're yeah. going yeah. fast. Exactly, right. speed dating. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it is the battle of the sexes. A, so yeah. you know, why is that not? a double entendre? I could, well, I could I hear know. Christina saying, "Look, if he can't keep up with me, he's not. He's not for me." She's a canyon. She's a canyon yeah. runner. So well, exactly. yeah. Hey, she did say on the show that that um, you know, when we're asking her about dating in the car scene, and she's like, you know, it's kind of interesting because like you know, the attention. You know, she's like, I'm going to give attention to my car on the weekend. I'm going to do car events if. The guy is not down with that. That's going to be a problem. Which more of a reason why you <laughs> yeah. should yeah. date if you're if you're right. that into your car. I could see that. Yeah. You know that's why I don't go to car shows because my wife is not into car shows right. and, um, unless there's something in it for her, like a new purse or something. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, do you have to buy a new purse when you have when you're on the every Sunday when you go to a car show? You got to come. No, actually, my something? my biggest fear is that I got to buy her a car because she likes nice cars. Oh, okay. What what is she driving these days? What's uh, what's her ride right Audi now? Audi Q7. So so you yeah, drive the Tesla. She she drives the Audi. You well, drive we the Tesla. supposed to, we're supposed to drive the Tesla to save you know yeah. money on gas yeah. or whatever. But since I got rid of my truck, which I'm sad. Um, oh, so then you then you're driving the Tesla most of the time. She's driving the Audi. Yeah, unless that I'm driving sense. you know my RX8 or whatever you know. Yeah, but yeah, she's driving the the Q7. Hmm. But she wants the G wagon, which. I don't know. Those are nice. Yeah, they're nice. They're small though. For as big as that they are, they're small inside, I think. But they're cool looking. Yeah. So can you take those off? I mean, I know they Oh yeah. They, as are they of, good off roaders. As a matter of fact, the, um Armin, who, you know, we featured his car in the wagon show, um, he's uh tied in with these guys, because um, he has a G, I think he's had a couple, but he has a G Wagon. Um and the guys at Ben's Tech down in Bellflower or Lakewood or something like that. Um, they lift them, they put the big tires and they go off roading. They have on the, you check out their Instagram. It's pretty crazy. They go off roading with the, but I think it's cool. That, that to me, that's the only way a G wagon should be. It shouldn't be with like all like the fat wheels. Pimped out. Like, pimped out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. got to have like the knobbies on it lifted. Well, that's good fitted. to hear. Yeah. It, no, to hear. no, yeah, it's okay. totally cool. I think it's 
awesome. That means when I see a G-Wagon now, it's usually driving through Montecito. Yeah. And it's, you know, cruising along. It's, it's someone like, who has a lot of like, zeros behind exactly, their name, too. Exactly. Yeah. And, then, and when you put that kind of money into something, are you ready Are you ready to put big knobbies on it and take it onto a big trail and smash it yeah. into rocks and stuff? That's so... I well, guess look, there are people hey, do it. Look, nothing against people that want to be that baller in Montecito or Beverly Hills and driving, you know, your G Wagon on 22s on rubber bands. That's cool too. Right. That's not what I'm into, but it, I do, I agree with you. Taking a $100,000, $200,000 rig, although, you know, it's funny because a, a Raptor is 100 grand now. So I mean, yeah, you know, they're on the it's same all side. relative, yeah, right? True. But, you know, you can get a used. Uh, G wagon for 60, 70 grand now. Still. Which, yeah, still. But yeah, lifting it, putting obviously going off road. I I'm at, I just think it's cool to see this. And I, exactly. I feel the same way. I think it's just good that there are people who take those, do them up, get them out on the dirt. Yep. Well, that, 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 that you bring up a good point, Gabe, that I want to bring up being the truck guy, right? Since I love trucks and mm-hmm. are into trucks and have had trucks. You're not um, faking the truck I'm not faking not the a... truck thing. <laughs> you I, are I, a truck guy. <laughs> I, I legit have had nice trucks. Okay. So. But the thing is, that's that's the thing. We talk about the price of trucks today. A new truck, I mean, what is what is a new Silverado one-ton, uh, I forgot their high trim level, like a GMC cost. Like a, it's it's got to be knocking on 90000 bucks. Like, oh, so yeah, yeah. Expensive. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the, the question is, you know, like with the truck rodeo guys when we had them on here, is like, would you rather have a forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 Primo, like 70s, 80s truck? Or would you spend the extra forty grand to get the two thousand twenty four truck with all the smog crap and diesel, you know, fluid crap and You're all that? You're definitely a truck guy when you say diesel yeah. uh, <laughs> smog crap and diesel. Well, yeah. it's true. No, but those old yeah. trucks, guys are buying those old trucks. A lot of guys yeah. because, like, I had the two thousand two three quarter ton, right? And people still, I think I could sell that. If I still had that truck, I could sell it for more now than I sold it five years oh, ago. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. for because, sure. because people don't want all that crap on it. They yeah. want, they want like, I control the truck and the emission system and all yeah. that stuff. Not having to put fluid in and DAF and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's a hassle. Yeah. Well, I know with the new trucks, I read some article six months, a year ago, whatever it was, that so many Americans were buying these huge trucks yeah. that they couldn't afford. Yeah. That they couldn't make the payments. It's like the housing crisis. Exactly. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, they're so expensive. They're dropping 80, 90, 100,000 and more on a truck they can't afford. In the manufacturer's defense, I can't believe I'm going to say that, but in the defense of like the new expensive trucks, the, the purpose of a truck has changed. The truck used to be for work and for farm duty. And, yeah, right. Ranch. Right. Right. But now have people want, and I look, I'm, I'm kind of, I fall in this category where I want to do the towing and I want to go you know haul some stuff and do work in them but i also want to take it out uh, with the wife to dinner you know or with the kids on a trip or whatever and i do want those creature comforts which i find very convenient so you're kind of combining your work truck and your i don't know your family car luxury truck or whatever so i'm not trying to justify the price because i still think the prices are ridiculous but um you know like seeing leather in a truck for the first time when when I was many years younger, I was like, that's weird seeing in leather in it. In, yeah. In, like premium leather. Really not. Yeah. And instead of vinyl or carpet or, or uh, cloth, I'm sorry. So I thought, you know, that was kind of weird, but it makes sense though. Cause then when I had my, I had my Ram 1500 sport and I think it was, it was pretty nice. Yeah. It was all, all fully appointed. <clears throat> and uh, my wife loved that truck. We took it everywhere, you know, and we could go out on a date with it and stuff like that. So, you know, but also to, at the same time, if I had some rowdy, you know, lifted, you know, monstrosity, I think my wife would still go out with me. But I, but I think the real problem is, at least it is for me, is the only way you can buy a truck now, like, like there's no such thing as a base truck anymore. Like, yeah. like there's only mid-level and insane level, the yeah. XLT Lariat or whatever. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, the cheap truck now is... 55,000 bucks and it's just like god dang i want to buy a work truck yeah what if i want to buy a work truck that's got the duramax 
and it's got the heavy duty suspension. It's three quarter ton, but I want to pay forty grand for it or thirty five grand. I don't cause, and bare bones, roll down windows. I, I know no one's going to do that, but yeah. but. I think there's a well, big market out there, though. Truck Rodeo proves it. Oh, yeah. There's a huge market yeah. out there who, from guys who and gals who want roll-up windows, manual door locks. They don't want a freaking DVD player. They don't want a crew cab because they don't have kids to put in the you back. You said DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, whatever screens or what, what a Bluetooth truck screen is. Yeah. Yeah, what, touch what, screen. What touch do you, screen. How do you play video for your kid in the back seat now in a vehicle? What do you play it off of? I don't even know. Uh, most people do iPads now. Yeah. The, the, built in, oh, okay. the built-in. The built-in stuff's Passing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like built in GPS. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that ended yeah. with our Honda Odyssey. I think that was the, yeah. the, one of the last things they yeah. really people, did. People, oh, okay. people really aren't doing but that. But I will say, talking about trucks, the one one reason why I think the trucks hold value for so long compared to an automobile is that, yeah. you know, once they strop, start dropping in value, that's when the guys who come in who use it for work every day come yeah. in and buy it. And they drive up the price again because. You know, now it's going. That truck's going to go back to work again. It's going to be an electrician's truck, a plumber's truck. It's going yeah. to work on the ranch. Trucks hold value really well. Better than cars, for they sure. Do. Oh yeah, yeah. They but, really do, and they're more useful for a lot longer. So. Yeah. And I will say this too. I mean, since I had relatives who owned a farm, sometimes the truck was that was their only thing. Yeah. They had yeah. the truck, and that is what they went out the yeah. dinner in. And it was a beater, and yeah. that's still what they went out the dinner yeah. in. Yeah. So some of that has never changed. But yeah, so trucks are cool. They are cool. Trucks are yeah. super cool. But, you know, it's interesting also, that brings up another thing. I was just uh, with some family relatives, and they asked me to drive them. We went out to dinner, and I drove them in there. It's a BMW. I think it's an X7. Mm -hmm. It's a big SUV. ass. It's like, SUV. Yeah, it's like a $100,000 SUV. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was funny that they were still hardcore using the built-in navigation. And I was yeah. like, that seems kind of... <laughs> How say now? Does anyone just use their phone for yeah. navigation or CarPlay? Like, what about you guys? If you out of a fancy, like in your Tesla, does your Tesla have built-in navigation? Yeah. The, well, the, that's the thing about the Tesla is like um, you have to because there's no CarPlay. Um, oh, okay. And, now you can find a way to use that, people. But you know what? The Tesla, I gotta say, is very impressive. Very impressive. I'm very impressed with the Tesla navigation. It's very good. So, I actually so like built-in navigation is still a usable thing. Well, for a Tesla product, for a Tesla, it's it's definitely ahead of the game as far as the other manufacturers' built-in navigation. They're way behind the curve. All the big automakers, they're behind on that. So that's why CarPlay is a big bonus for them because everybody wants to use Waze or their um, Apple Maps or whatever, right. Google Maps or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but with with the Tesla, the built-in one, I say it's pretty dang good i like it hmm. quite a bit interesting how yeah. about you cj do you use built-in or what do you no, use I, your phone i use my i use the phone and use it's, a thomas guide we take yeah really use a garmin yeah <laughs> no i mean i the only thing i mean look if it's southern california the only thing i don't need to know how to get around southern california what i need what i look for is where the traffic problems are yeah, yeah. that's all yeah yeah of and course. so what we use for that is we'll use Waze a little bit <clears throat> but i think kbc7 their traffic map you guys ever seen that no i never think it's used the most it. accurate one out there really yeah and then you turn on it K probably uses caltrans huh they probably use Caltrans I, for I, their feed because I they probably do because Caltrans pretty, probably I, has the most up to date or CHP. Yeah. I think some of them work. Doesn't ways work off CHP? I think. I got a question for you guys. If, if we're talking about navigation, What's that? <clears throat> if you use Google, Apple, mm -hmm. Ways, whatever, mm -hmm. how often do you not use the directions it tells you? To, if you do the opposite of what it tells you to do, I'd say thirty percent of the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Sometimes, sometimes I'll, especially in the valley, in San Fernando Valley, I'll be yeah. going down there on the 101, and it'll want to take me off, like, down Ventura Boulevard. And I'm like, Ventura Boulevard's a zoo, and there's signals every 20 yeah. feet. And it's like, mm, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But, yeah. I, but, I'm probably about the same as you, about 30%. Maybe maybe a little bit more, because if I know where the destination I'm going to, I was like, I know there's more than one way. Or when we had, like, the news guys on, and they were saying, like, oh, yeah. you know, I know ways... Uh, around traffic that most people don't know because I've been through these. I yeah. know this alley is a little bit quicker. There's less traffic than yeah. going down Sunset and Where you can make right turns instead of having to worry about left yeah. turns and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I rarely ever, ever, ever use it where I put it on and say, it tells me when to turn right and turn left. I rarely ever use that because, I don't know, I just have never done it. I look for those apps and the traffic because if, if I look at KBC's traffic and I see a red line on the 210 in Pasadena, I just know my way around that. I'm just going to go, you know, 
you know, figure out a way to ground that and get back onto where I want what to about, go. What about but, if, but I don't let the map tell me where to what go. What about if you've never been to the area that you're going to? I don't. I, again, I think I just use the map, but I don't set it up so it tells me when to turn right and left. Do you use like a, I mean, su- I a sundial that, and a and, compass. And well, <laughs> I mean, no, I can just look at the map and go, okay, I can go here and here. I, I would say this. When Google first came out, they would send you to some of the stupidest places. Yeah. So I said, screw that. I'm not going to do that anymore. In fact, my, my two daughters, they like to use these apps where it yeah, tells them where to turn left and right or you know, shows them a little map and follow this route. They always, always send them off in some crazy direction. Yeah. And it's like, now they got to backtrack for a half hour. I said, no, 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 don't do that. Here's the way to go. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. And they, they at first did not listen to me. And Natalie, our youngest, one time was driving down to see her grandparents, my folks down in Riverside County. And she calls me up. She goes, Dad, I'm lost. And yeah. Said, and I'm like, where are you? And she goes, I don't know. I said, well, you know, she was still driving. So I said, start saying the street names. And she'd say, okay. I'm, and she'd throw out a street For name. For the off ramps, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the off ramps. Mm-hmm. I'd say, oh, you're in Rubido. Rubido. She's like, Rubido? Rubido. What is, what is Rubido? I've never even heard of yeah, Rubido. Yeah, Rubido. It's like Riverside County. It's, really? Yeah, it's probably uh-huh. east of Riverside. And um, It's not spelled how it's pronounced. <laughs> Rubido. No, it ends with an X. Sounds French, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so I'm like, okay, now, uh, well, what, were you do- what were you following? She goes, and then she tells me that she's doing one of these map things. I'm like, oh, God. I, I told you not to do that. She goes, I know. I'm sorry. So no, what do I have to do? I have to like let my, close my eyes and say, okay, do a U-turn, go back on, connect to the 215, go south like you're headed to San Diego, and, yeah. da, 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 and get her back on track. Yeah. But this is why I don't usually use that stuff. If it's Southern California, which pretty much is the only places I drive, yeah. I even know the you know Northern California and the Bay Area pretty well. But if I'm in those areas, I don't need a map. Yeah, I know almost all the side streets and the freeways. I, I, and I just did a project down in uh, Walnut, which I don't know that area really well. I mean, I you know drive through Walnut on the freeway, but as far as getting off the freeway, and we had an Airbnb in Montclair, and Montclair is supposedly right next to Walnut, but the way uh, Google Maps took me was like, I must have been avoiding an off-ramp construction or something because it had me go down a surface street like eight miles. Yeah. And I'm in the middle of Montclair. Was like, it Central Avenue? No, no, it was like it was obscure, oh. like like stop signs every fifty feet kind of street. Because my in laws live in Montclair, when we go down there, um, there's all these different ways to get there. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. Don't, don't take the ten or don't take the sixty. I mean, yeah. you can take either one. Right. And then the, that's one thing I do like about those types of areas. Not like here in Ventura, it's like you can stay on one street for miles and yes. get to where you need to be. Yes, you know that is one cool thing about the perpendicular and parallel streets in L.A. and yep. uh, Riverside yeah. counties, but. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I, I don't mess with those things. Well, I want to know: Does our audience? What do they do? Do they? Are they? Because I'm not saying this because you guys are of the older age demographic. <laughs> the older age. But do other people do? Do like do younger people have the same thoughts as you do? Or they're like ways or die, you know? Or you well, know? Sure that, and the other thing is, I'm sure there's something better out there. I just don't know about it. There could be something out there. Is there something we're missing? Thomas so, guides. What? Thomas guides. Baby. <laughs> the old Thomas guides. Yeah. yeah, with all the pages. Need the out. Thomas guides. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, if somebody if somebody's watching this and made it this far into one of our shows, <laughs> <and you laughs> maybe <laughs> one or two people. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. And you, there, if there's an app you use or something you use that is like spot on every time, we'd love to know about it. C- CJ, yeah. what is the app all the young people are using? That's what I don't know. <laughs> That, what is it? What is out there well, my, anymore? I don't know because I don't pay attention. My dad, who's a little bit older than you guys, yeah. um, he's all about um, Waze. He's like, yes, Waze yeah. is this thing. And I can't stand I, Waze. I hate Waze. Waze has taken me in. So, it's got me lost, and it's got oh, me into traffic dude, jams. And I, I hate Waze. I had to take it down to, I was the, working on the, don't like Waze. the Grammys one year, and I had to take, this was years ago, and it took me down from Ventura. I mean, I ended up some bad bad name boil heights oh, and stuff. No. Dude, i'm like i'm in someone's backyard get right off now. in boil <laughs> heights and then make like, your way down to I, mean, I know la pretty well i mean yeah. i can get around la but i was like i've been a neighbor i was like dude i have never been here and i never want to come back here and ways you can kiss my ass to save seven minutes or whatever yeah you know yeah no that's I, why i don't use it i'm not a fan that's of ways yeah. but I, i'll say my tesla one tesla navigation spot on it's great i love it um and then apple maps everybody tells me not to use it but i just use it because it's just easy and I just, I just 
don't like Google, so you don't use Google Maps. I don't use. I mean, I have it, but well, people is it, send is, me. Is it because we we hate Google as an evil company, or is it just because you don't? No, like we Google love Maps? Google because we're part of their algorithms and stuff like that. We <laughs> oh, love I'm Google, sorry. Dan. I'm God. sorry. Chastise me appropriately. Please. I'm sorry. You just tried to drop us down a couple notches. I think, Dan. <laughs> uh oh. Oh boy. Google. I was just kidding. I love you, Google. Google. I want to give you an open mouth kiss. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to see that. But <laughs> that'll be ugly. Yeah. That'll be no, I, scary. I, um, I don't. I don't know for some reason. Well, I like uh, GUI's graphic user interface, and Apple has a awesome graphic user. It's Apple for God's sakes, you know. Right. But their Apple Maps isn't the greatest, you know. Um, the Tesla one's way better than Apple. Yeah. Apple Maps for sure. But I know Google's a little bit better with the navigation than than Apple. Um, I have friends that would literally never <laughs> say, send me the Helm. Helm's one of the guys that's like, I don't, I, only Google. Send me Googles. Uh, I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. I just, can we just fucking get there? <laughs> you know? So. Oh, boy. That was a nice diatribe of a. Yeah, I know. That, that, was, that was a lot about driving and not specifically <laughs> I, about cars. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Anyways, All right, well, lost. let's. I feel lost right now. Well, let's, it's let's like, talk, let's talk uh, state of, state of cars and so on. So, uh, CJ, I was going to tell you, I was at a birthday party for a friend last night talking to an old friend who I haven't talked to in a few years. And he was asking me about the show and everything. And I was telling him about it because he's a car guy. And so not hardcore, but I mean, he's, he rebuilt, you know, a, a Bronco and, you know, from the ground up like an old Bronco. And he started talking to me about his first car and favorite car was his Corvair Monza Spider. And I, and, yeah, I went, and I went, what yeah. the hell is a Spider? I don't even know what a yeah. Spider. What's a Corvair Spider Monza or Monza so, Spider? So Monza is the highest horsepower. Okay. And then, and it came in two so and four like doors. So it's like 62 versus 55. Well, it depends. Or... No, they had Monza through all the years, but they had the Gen 1, which was 60 to 64, and then they had the Gen 2, 65 to 69, but they okay. had Monzas through the two. Okay. Spider just refers to convertible. Oh, I've seen Corvair convertibles. Yes. Yeah. Right, and those, so you'd have to find out if it was a you know which generation it was the first the first one was just his boxy, his right? was late his was late okay, I think he said be, like sixty six or something yeah, maybe okay. sixty seven now those I think had one hundred and ten horsepower I think okay most of those were I mean non turbo was one hundred and ten horsepower okay but those are good looking cars that are kind of sleeker looking than the bo- the Gen one box but that was back in the day when convertibles had no roll bar they had no, no. thing that pops up and so on no. if you roll the car like you roll the car you're dying death trap now yeah. you're done right but the good thing is the Cor- the Corvair wasn't fast, so you're not going to die. Yeah. Yeah, true. You're going, you know, 50, 55 miles an hour yeah. if you're lucky. According to Ralph Nader, you, what you had to worry about was getting rear-ended. Yes. Yeah. It was like the Pinto or the, thing, yeah, right? Or, or, or smashing the front end where the gas tank was into something. But, <laughs> yeah. But even that was proven wrong. Oh, the gas tank's in the front on that because the engine's in the back, yeah, right? the engine's in the back, oh. gas tank's in the front. So, so it's yeah. the opposite of the Pinto. Exactly. The Pinto blew up because the gas tank yeah, was in, in the, the back, back and it wasn't, yeah. what, cushioned or isolated well or something? And know. if you... I remember my. Yeah, Joe's wrong. In puncture it, it blows up. Well, something. I think this came out in a previous episode. My first car in high school was a Pinto because that's all I could afford. And I remember friends telling me, like, oh man, you're going to die in that car. You're going <laughs> to oh, die. No. Someone's going to rear end you at five miles an hour and it's going to explode and you're going <laughs> to die. Well, I mean, I sometimes feel that way driving in Beth 61, which I drove here today. Oh, you drove the Corvair today? I drove the 61 oh, Corvair. Okay. And because we got to put some miles on it, you know, in fact, you're about to post something that we shot yesterday in it. Mm hmm. Beth and I were, were planning a trip in it. Oh, okay. The question is, how far do we go on that trip? Yes. And can your marriage survive? Can the marriage survive? <laughs> <Corvair? laughs> yeah, but, and will we die? I mean, are we going to take a Corvair halfway across the country, and are we going to prove Ralph Nader right? We're going to we're going to die in the '61 Corvair. I don't think so. But let's hope not. I'm more worried about I'm more worried about this thing, you know, dying and you know. The ten freeway in the middle of the desert, you know, or something like that. That's what in, in Barstow yeah. or or Baker. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, get up on the the forty freeway, which takes you, I think, you know, across the upper tier through Flagstaff. Yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, there's some lonesome, Texas, there's some lonesome like parts on that there's highway. Some I've long, been on. lonesome yeah, stretches. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, that's what I'm worried about. You know, that's why we need a chaser truck. You're gonna be, do you want to drive the chaser vehicles to make sure that we survive this whole trip? That depends on what the chaser vehicle is. What is, <laughs> the ch- is it? If it's your Porsche, no, maybe. it's gonna be. It's a, supposed to be a big pickup Duramax, something with or air something conditioning. Like that. Yeah, it's gonna be a big Duramax or something. Like that. A Sprinter van with the air conditioning. There you go. Oh, that Mitsubishi van. What what was that thing called? The Delicia or something? Oh yeah, I, what, uh, Delica. De- Delica. I is that what Delica. it's called? It's called a Delica. A Delica. It's a Mitsubishi. It's like a mid nineties. Mitsubishi Delica. It so looks that, like a camper. Like that was a U.S. market car. 
I believe so. Adelica? I don't know much about it. I don't. Do you know much about those? That was. Are you sure that was left hand drive? I think I thought that was a right hand drive one. Because I sold Mitsubishi. No, 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 that's a left hand drive. Was it? Oh, I'm I sold sure. Mitsubishi's in the '80s. I think was it the? Yeah, it was like the '80s, and I don't remember Adelica. I think I think that yeah. that must have been imported here because I've never seen those. Maybe ever, that's a, uh, other than somebody importing them because you can't. It's old enough to import. Maybe now. that's a JDM or a Singapore or Filipino or could, or, market or, or something. Or could have been from Australia because Australia uh, had left hand drive cars yeah. too. Yeah. And we're gonna post yeah. that on socials too. Right. Yeah, yeah. By the time we are this show airs, we'll it'll everything. probably be on there. But we'll post everybody's dirty yeah. laundry and all that stuff. You yeah. know, I don't know. Oh, I, I've got something I wanted to bring up with you guys because I read, I, I, I went down a rabbit hole on this the other day. Okay, I'm not a car guy, right? Ostensibly, yeah, sure. but I'm a truck guy. Oh, we're gonna get mail now. Right, and I've always go. thought the Holden Monero, Monaro, Monero. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? The Hol- yeah, that's what? GM. That's Holden's a, GM. That's a badass car. I mean, it's 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 a, it's a Holden what? It's an it's a Holden Monero, but it's they had it on Top Gear and they drove the snot out of it. And it's when we were making mm. the drifting movie, I think, and mm. you know, it's it's a drift mobile because there's no weight in the back. It's rear wheel drive, slides four to yeah. six hundred horsepower, and I'm like, that's wow. nuts. It's got an LS in it. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So anyway, there was a guy I saw a YouTube video, and he had a I don't know a 2009 Holden Monero. How do you get that in the United States? How do you legally get that? And he legally got it. Yeah, I saw I saw one here in the states too as well. Do you um, do you know how he got it? No, I don't, because that's a that's a really cool car. Well, this is what I want to tell you. This is this is what's so cool about it. Okay, he, this guy figured out he's obviously a hardcore car guy. I'm gonna buy a 2009 Pontiac G8 yeah. with the LS1 in it, the hot rod one. He bought it for like 13 grand or something, and it's still it's a nice car, great condition. He said had a terrible Carfax, but nice condition car. And then he bought a body, the rear end of the Holden from Australia for like five grand. Found that the front end was totaled, bought the rear end, brought it here, welded it, turned it into that in Indiana. Oh, and you can register it under any name you want. You can call it a CJ Mobile, it doesn't matter. And he registered it in Indiana as a Holden Monaro Ute. Wow. Actually, you know, there's a company. Now that you bring that up. There's, there's one a, in Colorado, he said. Well, there's a company that's been doing this for years with um, Jettas. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because. To these, turn it into what? Into a tr- pickup truck. Oh, really? Yes, because you get the 2.0 liter diesel, which is an amazing engine. Yeah, as right? we all know. Yep. And they made a crap ton of them. Yep. And you basically buy a Jetta, cut the back half of it out, and you put a pickup bed, truck. Extended. Bed, extended. Bed. And it actually looks really, really cool. But what kind of truck? Like it, a Japanese truck? No, no, no. Like it, a, no it's still, it's still, or the Volkswagen it's, truck. You don't change the title. It's still a VW. Right. At the end of the day, you're just basically taking the rear section of it, the trunk and you know the right. rear quarters and the doors off, and you're welding on this uh, truck. It's basically like a, it's a VW truck, basically, but it's a newer Jetta, uh, this company makes a kit to do all the okay. all, all the So swap. you get the bed from this company. Yeah, it's still front wheel drive. Fits. It doesn't change right. the drivetrain. The drivetrain is all the same, you know. But you have a small little Jetta pickup truck. And they do that. But am I am I imagining things though that in the eighties or maybe nineties Volkswagen did sell a little truck? They did. They did. Oh, they they did. did. In the eighties, yeah. they, they did. Was it here in the U.S. Yeah. market? Yeah, yeah, I've seen yeah it. I remember yeah. seeing those. So they're There's not a rabbit take... truck. They're, they're, uh, a rabbit yeah. truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not taking the rear end off one of those. They're no. just taking some thing they made. And I think I think they make I think they make the oh, bed too. Yeah. Okay. But it looks like once it's done correctly it looks like legit but most of the guys they use it for like a work truck a jet up. i mean think about it's it totally cool well a it's just like it's, the, it's the maverick truck. it's a ford maverick yeah. essentially they're making yeah. their own ford maverick only a volkswagen yeah okay yeah. and if you're looking for something that nobody else has boom you got it yeah, yeah it looks it's good. a yeah. it's it's actually a really cool deal. i just didn't want to get into something like that as i was thinking about it but i didn't want a front wheel drive truck well you guys saw that one i sent you too the mercedes pickup truck from Argentina. Yes. I sent you that a little a little meme. Kind I don't Dan, know. Dan, the non-car like guy it. coming in with uh, some but see, internet posts. But there. it's a truck. It's a freaking truck. And I'm like, a W123 truck, I would be see, all W123, over. who knows that? Guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, who knows that? Well, that's from Helm. <laughs> Helm. Helm taught me that. Well, you know, it's funny. It's I 10 o'clock at night. Code. I'm laying there. I'm like going, getting ready for the last minutes of my day. And all of a sudden, ding. Dan sends me a photo of like a... Mercedes pickup truck. Yeah. I think, what's Dan doing up at this hour? But see, the story is freaking interesting. <laughs> like in Argentina, they couldn't get the cars in and farmers down there wanted them. So Mercedes of Argentina made these trucks out of W123s. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like, wow. So Dan hit the nail right on the head. 
and I'll give this a Dan's defense about being the quote unquote non car guy. guy. Yeah. So what got Dan Hall hot and bothered about that particular car was the story about the car. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. It's cool as hell. Yeah. Now so, that I like. Yeah. So, yeah. and this goes back to, uh, and we have received a couple messages, and you, I think you forgot to mention the tip line in the beginning of the show. Did I, did I mention the tip line? Ooh. I thought I did, didn't I? No. Did you? No, you didn't. That's, that's just you my didn't. old age. Okay. I don't that think you did. Well, I'll help you out here. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've been getting messages from our um, tip line and through DMs, um, but... We prefer the, the, the tip line, you know, so then we all can read it, Yeah. Um, where people tell us their stories, um, and they just say a few words about... So, we've had a couple people message us with some really, really interesting stories, and I can't wait to cover these stories. Um, a lot of people with like um, life-threatening um, diseases or um, issues that they had, that cars was a way for them to come, come out of this, mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, they're just, or there are car guys that had these life issues that, you know, it's just, I, I thought it was super, super cool. And that w that's one of the things that I think we really need to keep stressing over and over and over to people because we want them to feel comfortable. Your story is important. Yeah. What you have to say about your car story is important. Preserving that story is just as important because when you die, the stories die with you. How else are you going to preserve these stories? So we want to encourage people again please share your story whether it's with us or somebody else preserve these stories and share them but if you want to share them with us please send us uh, a me message through our tip line on the website whistleftulsa.com forward slash tip line i just thought about you know this would be cool hmm. what if people we inspired people to shoot videos of them with their car explaining in a couple minutes why that car is so special special to them they sent it to us we'll we'll pop it up here on the show if people will do it. We can it. put it into the show. If yeah, people will do it, I think yeah. that'd be cool. I mean, until we can figure out the whole uh, yeah. getting people in not live into yeah. the show, the, yeah, it's a good, good we, thing to do. Yeah, I mean, we can't always make it out to, you know, Illinois or Ohio or whatever, yeah. but if they send it to us, we can pop no, it No, absolutely. Uh, I think absolutely. it's a good idea. I, I, want, I, re I really want to cover everybody's story. I, I mean, if we could physically do that, that would be amazing. Obviously, we could yeah. only do so much, but... We want to encourage people to tell us a story. At least we'll share it on our socials or share it on the show or share it on the website. Yeah. You know, because... That's you know, why we're here. That's, that's why there big. is West of Tulsa. It, we only exist to tell stories of people that's and their right. cars and trucks and boats and motorcycles If you're looking for whatever. a Top Gear Motor Trend review, this is not the not place. Good. As if, if you haven't figured it out already, we don't always know what we're talking about. But yeah. we, we do know people's stories and we like telling stories. Especially about and, hear, and, and hearing mind, stories. Yeah. And we don't mind being yeah. corrected when we're wrong, right? Not at all. No, nah, don't ever correct me, ever. Just be nice. Don't, <laughs> okay. Just be nice don't about Don't talk it. to me. You yeah. can correct everyone except Gabe. Yes. Yeah. yes. Helm, me, CJ, Beth. No I'm the problem. government. I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be a hater to correct us. Just say, hey, you're wrong. Yeah. This well, isn't, and that's the right? thing. It's, I would say it's impossible. It, well, it should be impossible to hate on somebody's story because it's their story. If you don't like it, okay, I get totally. that. But it's your story. You're the author of your story. If it's if it's not true, that's well, that's on you, you know. But you're sounding suspiciously Tony Robbins <laughs> like there. You're the author of your own destiny. Yes. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Send us forty nine ninety five. So you give Helm shit about that. So I'll give you shit about that. How's that? It, you can it, try all you want, Dan. <laughs> The Tony Robbins line. I remember hey, that. Hey, I'll be, I'll be the Tony Robbins. The he Tony did, Robbins. He did all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be the Tony Robbins of the car story world. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're the motivational speaker of the car world. Yes, right? motivational. Absolutely. That is... It's a good word. It's a great word because I do feel, based off the people that we've talked to and people that we have gotten messages from, I want people to feel motivated to share their story. A lot of people are very shy about sharing their story because they think people... Don't, don't care. Want to, yeah, like it's not a big enough story. No, and yeah. if if I could say this, all of us at the show, we care about the story because that's why we're here. Like you said, Dan. we find them interesting. Absolutely, yeah. right. I mean, think about it. We we talked about ways for ten minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll but take any story. People probably clicked off. <laughs> yeah. At that point, but that's all right. If anyone's still watching, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But maybe somebody's into ways. 
There's maybe, somebody that's maybe, into that stuff. Maybe, but yeah. but it's interesting too. Like remember when Christina was on, she was sitting in the chair you're sitting in, Gabe, and she was she was nervous and like, I don't know if people are gonna want to hear about it. And yeah. we're like, No, 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 bring it on, bring it on. And she's she's a really interesting person. And she's and, had a ton of response. And her. and her journey through cars yeah. was super interesting. Yeah. I mean, everything she's gone through and she related it back to her kids and Subarus and yeah. her yeah. marriage and canyon cutting and all that. It, it, it was we we like hearing those stories for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So if anybody's made it this far in the show or listening, you know, please just head over to the website, drop us a line, share what tip line. Yeah. the tip line, tip line on our website, and um, just share your story. I mean, um, we'll get to it. I'm, there's no doubt about it. It's just you know, we you may not be on the show, but at least we could talk about your story to yeah. other people. Or put it on our blog, or put it on our socials, or whatever. Because one of our highest rated shows is the Wagon Show. Yeah, and we didn't have people on; they just sent in submitted stuff, and we like that show. Yeah. That was a cool. We show. We need to do another. Uh, we got to find a, a more efficient way to do it, where we can get people to, you know, send us pictures and specs of their cars, and we can just talk about it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure out a new way to do it. But I want to do another one. Like I want to do minivans. I want to do trucks. De- definitely the Honda one. I want to do a Honda one. I mean, I'm, yeah. Well, like like Craig's new car, his new Ferrari. I mean, there's a show right there because that's an interesting car. I still think it's kind of bizarre looking and weird, but it's a cool car, definitely. And people who've owned it love him. And why did he get yeah. it? Why did yeah. he buy it? What's know. he going to do with it? Well, what's think, the story behind it? I think it? we partly inspired him because I said, one of the questions I said, with your crazy collection, what's the one thing that's missing? And he goes, a Ferrari. Then he goes and gets one. And then one. he goes out and, and then he goes Ferrari. and gets one. Yeah. Although I Wouldn't do, that be I, nice? Although, I, you know, Dan was not a... He, you're not a huge fan of that particular... So the Ferrari I just FF. think it's funky looking. <laughs> I love the way he said it, too. He basically said it's ugly when he said... He said, he said it's not the most flattering Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. Well, I was choosing my words carefully because I like Ferraris. They're beautiful cars. I mean, they're work of art. Uh, Helmet, I, Helmet, I love the F. I think that's an awesome Ferrari. The FF, yeah. It sounds amazing. Yeah. I think, it, I, I think it's cool because it's definitely polarizing compared to the other Ferraris, you yeah, know, yeah, um, for sure. But I like it's different, you know, and actually it has a lot of room compared yeah. to other most Ferraris. Yeah. So I'm not mad at it. It's an interesting car for yeah. sure. It's an interesting choice for a single guy. I thought. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get Craig back on here and tell him that you hate his car, <laughs> and w- the rest of us like it. But I didn't say I that. hate it. I just said. I'm not a fan yeah, of it, but yeah. it's different than hate. Hate is a strong word. Craig, Craig will take hate. Hey, other other, <laughs> other polarizing cars over the history: '63 Corvette split windows. People didn't like those. Really? Is that yeah. was that a I have was not that met a one person that could? doesn't like those? Well, now they don't. Well, yeah. I mean, now they like them. Yeah, Back yeah. then, they didn't. Here's the problem: you couldn't see out of them. That split window. The windows were so tiny. So it like yeah. so Chevy it. Chevy actually came out with a modification so you could yeah. modify. So a lot of the original 63s were modified to a solid back window. Yeah. So there was a there was a pillar in between the yeah. two back windows. Just the split. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What was the split? Was it part just of the metal. body? Just yeah. Being, yeah. It was part, it was of, the part of the hatch. Yeah. It was part so of, so it was if metal. you wanted to convert it, you'd have to yeah. hacksaw that out and yeah. put a different window. And then now they, guys are doing the exact opposite. They don't want to go back because exactly. the split windows bring in That's more crazy. money. Yeah. Do you know what year that happened? 63. Okay. It's a six, the only year of a split one, the split one, they only did it one year, and that's because it wasn't popular. Oh. If it was popular, they would have kept doing it. Okay. But they weren't. And okay. so 63 Corvettes. But now there were so few of them made. Uh, that's why you. Well, people can, always want what they can't have. Exactly. I, mean, I love this. We're not, we don't, we're not experts on anything, but we just know some random facts. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, my grandparents had a pair of 66 Corvettes that I used to ride around in when I was a little kid. So I don't know a lot about them, but I remember being in them and going down PCH and going, wow, this cool is a badass. Yeah. 427, manual, to, what, a four-speed? Would have been a four-speed? Probably speed? a four-speed, I would imagine, four-speed. Because I remember my grandfather yeah. hitting it, flooring it, and pinning me back in the seat. And that was the first car that ever pinned me back in the seat. And I just went, whoa, oh my God. That's amazing. I spoke to my uncle in uh, Vero Beach, Florida last weekend, and he goes, I love the show you guys are doing. West of Tulsa, I've watched every one of your shows. You put out 12 of them. And I'm like, whoa, good job. Dang, yeah, he's he, our biggest fan. He's our biggest fan. Wow. Yes. My Uncle Eddie, and he's in Vero Beach, Florida. My Uncle Eddie. Uncle, uncle Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I talked to him. He goes, oh, I love the West of Tulsa. And in fact, you know what? I've got my photo. He goes, and some people think I'm funny for having it, but I got a photo of me with hair. With my '64 Corvette, and I said, "You got to send that to us because we got to put oh, yeah. that up on the show." In fact, he's on our videos, 
You know, the, the video we put together, it's like a trailer video that we shot, and you can see the classic car driving away. It looked like part of my dad's wedding. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember and that clip. It was yeah. my uncle in that car. Oh. And I said, hey, by the way, have you seen the video that we have on our trailer? He goes, oh, my God, I watch it all the time. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so he loves that video. Well, well thank, thank you, you Uncle Eddie. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you, Uncle Eddie. Yeah. And if you're listening to this or watching this one, thank you. Well, and no, does, no, he's watching, I'm sure. I'm and does sure he have a Winnebago? And does he wear a blue leisure suit, polyester? Not that I'm aware. I, you know, it's been a while since I've seen him. He's not that Uncle Eddie. But he's not. No, no. Okay. He's not. No. Not from what was it? Vacation. <laughs> vacation. Yeah, vacation. No, that, was, no. that was Cousin Eddie, wasn't it? Oh, was it Cousin that Eddie? That was Cousin yeah. Eddie. Well, to the uncle. kids, it was Uncle yeah. Eddie. Yeah, okay. right. This is Uncle. Uncle so, Eddie. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Shitter's full. <laughs> Shitter's but he'll full. But he'll right. let me know if he has a Winnebago, and now that you've asked the question. but <laughs> Vero Beach, Florida, I'd say there's a good chance. That could be. You know, yeah. older person in Florida, in yeah. Vero Beach, yeah. Sounds sounds like he could have one. Could make a road trip to Vero. Yeah, yeah drive Let's, the drive the Corvair to Vero Beach, oh, Florida. That'll be go. impressive. Yeah, Let's that'll start be impressive. With Bakersfield. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what Beth says. She that's says, more Let's, realistic. Let's go to L.A. first and see if we can make. That's it there. more realistic. Oh, darn her and her sensibility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of her sensibility, we have to figure out what, what kind of where we'll air that show that she put the uh, kibosh on, right? Well, let's put it to the audience. Let's see if we get any engagement. Yes, yeah, so if two you've made people. it this far, I gave a hint. So, so I don't know if we can do it or not. If you've made it this far, in the comments of this video on YouTube, mm -hmm. say that you want to see the lost show because if you don't want to see it, it's never going to be seen, and it is controversial. I will say that, <laughs> right, Gabe? Am I right? I don't think it's controversial. I do think it's Gabe. Hey, build the hype. Come on, nah, man. be a hype man. And it has Come nothing on. to do with politics. No, it's yeah. all about anatomy. Yes, anatomy, exactly. <laughs> Come on, Gabe, we're I trying. Think, we're trying to build I think some we hype gave here. Hints. We're I trying to we... build some hype here, oh man. God. I'm gonna air the show. Yeah. I don't care what you guys say. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it when you guys aren't looking. <laughs> you're gonna hit, he's gonna hit publish the hit publish yeah, button. We'll right? start a private YouTube channel and send yeah. it to everybody. Uh, that works. Yeah. All right. I don't want to overhype it. That's the problem. <laughs> I'll be the hype man for it. <laughs> because people are gonna go, what? That was it. That was is it? Is that what you guys were All talking about? All that brouhaha? That's nothing. That's nothing. I think it's no big deal. Okay. All that brouhaha over nothing? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? We cover it. We covered everything today. This yeah. It's, it's been a good rambling show. An hour. Good rambling show. Yeah. We we covered a lot we of ground no here. made no sense for almost an hour. Isn't that amazing? People are going to find it entertaining or just they, just t they tuned out a lot. People are 45 say, minutes people ago. People are going to say, you guys need a guest because you're just talking about random shit that means yeah. nothing. Well, it's the first time we've actually done this. We haven't had a show where we haven't had a guest, per se, or a topic to cover with but our team. It shows why we need one. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It'd be like, don't ever do this again, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, you guys have to have a guest every time. Yeah. All right. We, but we covered everything. No, we're, we're yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're coming up in an hour, so that's pretty good. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, we so, so the tip line, you mentioned it. Yes. If you have a story, go to our tip line, westontulsa.com, click the tip line page, and... Send in the information. We've had some good ones. In fact, we had one yesterday where a guy may join us in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. So we'll let you know about that one. Also, like, follow, subscribe. We have our YouTube channel. Thank you. And we thank you, and we'll see you west of Tulsa. <laughs>